But what the Buddha did on the night of his enlightenment was add that extra step of relaxing. Mm -hmm. And that changed the entire meditation. It, went up, it couldn't go so deep as to suppress anything. You couldn't make your attention stay just on one thing when you add that relaxed step. It's like you don't have the relaxed step, your mind just points and just stays on that point. When you add the relaxed step, what you do is you start broadening your horizons, as it were. You start developing peripheral vision. So you can see when hindrance start to arise and you can let it go. You can see all of these things. The thing that really draws me to Buddhism is the absolute lack of suppression of anything. There is no suppression. When you 6R, you're not suppressing anything. You're allowing the space for whatever that hindrance is to be. But you're not keeping your attention on it. And by not keeping your attention on it, and relaxing into that, and bringing up a wholesome object, you have a brief moment of relief, of pure mind. Yeah. And you keep bringing that pure mind back to your object of meditation. So the hindrance, because it doesn't have anything pushing against it, I don't like it, I want it to stop, mm -hmm. it pushes back stronger. This is what happens when people have things like depression. They have a painful feeling arise. And I don't like it. Craving arises. And then your story about why you don't like it. And your habitual tendency of always trying to think the feeling away. <coughs> but thoughts are one thing and feelings are something else. Objectifying again. Mm. Mm -hmm. So you wind up with that feeling because you're trying to control it with your thoughts. You wind up making that feeling bigger and more intense until finally you say, I can't stand it. I've been depressed for weeks on end. I'm going to the doctor, I'm going to take some medicine that dulls you out. <laughs> that makes you unaware and causes all kinds of other problems mm -hmm. with the side effects and that sort of thing. It's really not a good thing. So when you start practicing by adding that extra step of relaxing, you're not trying to control the feeling. The feeling can stay there. It doesn't matter. But you don't keep your attention on it. So you see the feeling arise and then that craving right behind it and you recognize that. And you start to get into your thinking. And concepts and opinions and ideas and the story. And you get into that habit of trying to control all of that <coughs> with your mind, with your thoughts. Now we've been doing this from time immemorial. Mm -hmm. Until you've come to this retreat. <laughs> <laughs> Until the Buddha came around to show us that there there is no separation between mind and body. Mind and? Body. Yeah, sure. And you need to be able to recognize what's happening in both. Mm -hmm. When I first had the insight that a thought caused tension to arise in your body, when I first saw that, that was such an, oh wow, it was just, I, I couldn't believe it. I'd see a thought start to arise, and I'd see a tension somewhere in my body. 
wow. Or I would do something, you know, I'd do a little owie of some sort, and all of a sudden the thought's there. It was amazing to see that.